Hey gang, chemistry coach coming at you with some more on our gas law journey. Uh, let's take a look at a specific application. Um, when we did one of the problems in the last video, uh, I gave you conditions of zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. And I kind of give you a hint where we're going. We very commonly like to use a reference state. You'll see this and not just this, but a whole di bunch of different things. A, a kind of a reference point to compare everything else to. Like the atomic masses are all relative to the carbon-12 isotope, which is defined. Hey, okay, that's all right. No big deal, as long as we all agree on it. But remember, density of gases is dependent on, on temperature. So trying to list the densities of all gases, say I want to just tabulate, maybe in the Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, the densities of gases. Well, oh, it's different at every temperature. So how could you possibly list in one book, I guess you could, the density of every gas at every temperature? Ah, that means so, I just want to cry, call the ambulance. Right? So commonly we'll just say, hey, Let's tabulate all these, but let's just pick a reference temperature or maybe something else at a reference pressure, right, or both. And that's what we call standard temperature and pressure. It's not the motor oil. It to be a standard temperature and pressure, right? And that is a common reference state we use. You'll see if you look up in, in tabulated books, densities at STP. Or sometimes you'll see, you know, a different temperature or whatever. But for our STP for chemists, Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. Sometimes you'll see things listed at 25 degrees Celsius. That's okay, but if somebody says standard temperature, think oh, zero degrees Celsius. Somebody says standard pressure, think one atmosphere. And these are exact by definition. So if I give you a, a ideal gas equation problem, a perfect pr uh, equation problem um, at SDP conditions, well, I just gave you the temperature of zero degrees Celsius, which is exact, and a pressure of one atmosphere, which is exact. But the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry is trying to change all of the stuff we've been doing for so long. They want us to go, no, standard pressure is now one bar. Why? Why? Why do they do this to us? So most of us just ignore that. So technically, standard pressure is one bar. So STP would zero, be zero degrees Celsius of one bar pressure. Urgh, it makes us so angry. We've been using one atmosphere our whole careers, and I'm not stopping now. So in my class, STP will be zero degrees Celsius at one atmosphere, <laughs> all right? Because if you use one bar, you're gonna, your calculations will be off a little bit because a bar is like, I think it's 1.01325 bar or something like that per atmosphere. So it's just a tiny, tiny correction. It's almost an irrelevant factor. A lot of people just say, assume an atmosphere and a bar are the same. Not, not technically, not to a couple decimal places. But anyway, just letting you know the confusion there. We will be going with one atmosphere in my class to keep it you know, kosher with what pretty much most other people I know are doing. Yay! Two things we're going to do. This is going to allow us, since we have a specified pressure and a specified temperature, You'll commonly see this term called molar volume. If we assume exactly one mole of the gas, regardless of its identity, remember it doesn't matter, the particle size doesn't matter compared to the volume of the container. So it doesn't matter if it's carbon dioxide, water vapor, helium atoms, neon atoms, it doesn't matter. If we assume one mole of that gas and we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that gas, what would be the volume of that gas? At standard temperature and pressure. That's going to be a constant value for ideal gases, assuming ideal gas behavior. That should be the same for every gas, right? Well, let's calculate that, and we can use that as a shortcut to bypass the ideal gas equation. <gasps> cool. So what I want you to do is take the ideal gas equation and calculate the volume of exactly one mole of a gas at standard temperature and pressure. See what you get. I'll do it on the next board. So molar volume of a gas. You don't ever really have to use this. It's a nice shortcut. You can always just default to PV equals NRT. You'd be fine. Just plug in zero degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, you're off to the races. But if you want a nice little shortcut, if you've seen a problem, hey, at STTV conditions, I'll show you a problem for that in the next, uh, in the next board. You can use this molar volume concept as a shortcut. It's up to you. You don't have to. So what is molar volume of a gas? Well, molar, one mole. So let's assume exactly one mole of any gas. It does not matter what the identity of the gas is if we're assuming ideal gas behavior, where we're not worrying about, we're assuming the particle volume is zero, so it doesn't matter what the gas is, and we're assuming there's no particle-particle interactions other than direct collisions, okay? 
So if we're at standard temperature and pressure conditions, zero degrees Celsius, exactly, one atmosphere, exactly, unless you're at the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry and you want to one bar pressure, no, just say no. Uh, and we have exactly one mole. So we know the moles, we know the pressure, we know the temperature, exactly solve for the volume. All right, so it's non-changing conditions, so we're using the ideal gas equation, PV equals NRT. Isolate your variable, so volume would be NRT over P, just divide both sides by P, right? Plug in one mole, exactly, right? Divide by the pressure, one atmosphere, exactly. Multiply by the universal gas constant, 0 0.082057. I was using 0 0.082058 almost my whole life. Introductory chem, you might use 0 0.08206. Right, this just gives you one more significant digit. So I'll give this to you so you use what I give you on a test. 0 0.082057 liters atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And the temperature is zero degrees Celsius, but we need it in Kelvin, so we add you 273.15. So it'll be, oh, I can do that in my head, 273.15 Kelvin. That's exact as well. So the only thing that's not exact here is R. So we're going to go to five significant figures for that one. So I get 22.41386, good to four, six, five significant figures, liters. So that rounds to 22.414 liters. That would be the volume of any gas. I don't care what its identity is. Totally irrelevant. And so what you commonly see when people say molar volume is they'll say, hey, if we have one mole of that gas, it has a volume of 22.414 liters. So it's written as a conversion factor, 22.414 liters per mole, right? It's implied that one mole is implied. Even though it canceled out when I did the calculation, here it's the molar volumes implied 22.414 liters per exactly one mole. Now, if I give you a problem and give you the amount of a gas, and I say, hey, this here's this much gas at STP conditions, just convert the amount of gas to moles, use this to convert to liters. You got the volume. Boom. Or if I give you the volume of any gas at STP conditions and I ask you for the mass or the number of molecules or the number of atoms, right? Just get the volume to liters, use that to convert to moles and convert moles to using Avogadro's number either to molecules or use the molar mass uh, to convert to grams. And then once you're in grams, you can go to any units you want. So two types of equations going from volume to amount of gas or going from amount of gas to volume. If you're at STP conditions, boom, we can use that as a conversion factor. <gasps> Let's do it. All right, two ways to do these kinds of problems. Here you go. If, note the big if, if you're at STP conditions, the molar volume can be used as a conversion factor between amount of gas and volume of gas, just stating what I said on the last one. So here's the problem. What is the mass of 357 milliliters of sulfur hexafluoride gas? All right, that's a molecular compound, covalent, at STP, oh, note, and not STP conditions. So we have two ways we can approach this. You can use PV equals NRT. Right? You can derive a gas equation from that and have at it, understanding that zero degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. Or knowing, hey, I'm at STP, I can use that molar volume. I'm going, I'm going from volume of a gas to amount of a gas. I could use the molar volume as a shortcut. And I will provide you the molar volume on my exams, right? Even though you could solve for it. So let's do our game plan here. We're solving for the mass. Now it doesn't say what unit. So let's just do grams. Let's do grams of SF6. That's where we want to get, correct? Hey, they didn't tell me mass, so I'm just going to leave it in grams. Uh, starting with the volume. So I've got milliliters. Now molar volume, remember, is 22.414. Liters per mole. So I need to get my volume to liters first. Do you see that? So I need to get to liters. You don't have to put the SF6 because the identity is irrelevant here. Um, once I'm in liters, I can go to moles. And once I've got moles, that's an amount, right? I mass asked for grams. So I just use the molar mass, take the uh, atomic mass of fluorine times six, plus the atomic mass of sulfur, add them together, limited by fewest decimals, boop, you've got grams. And I could have gone to centigrams or milligrams or pounds or whatever. I could have started you in gallons or something weird. But the key is we can use the molar volume here. So we're going to use the metric system here, molar volume there, molar mass 
There. Can we do this? One, two, let's do this in three steps. See if you can pause it, see if you can do it before I do. Let's see if we get the same answer. Yes, this is such a cool shortcut. Ready, gang? Let's see if you follow what I did. So we're starting with our volume in milliliters. Step one, let's convert to liters. Let me get the cat hair off my nose. All right, so we know, well, I hope you know by now, there's a thousand milliliters per liter. My favorite part, boom, boom, units cancel. So that's step one. Now let's go liters to moles. We're at STP, so we can use 22.414 liters per mole. So there's 22.414 liters per mole of SF6, sulfur hexafluoride. Leaders goes bye-bye. It's dimensional analysis, baby. Probably the most important video to understand. Dement always think of it. If you're ever not sure, go back and watch the dimensional analysis video over and over till you master this technique. Right? We're just focused on the units. Now let's go from moles to grams. Using molar mass. Let's figure it out. So let's get our trusty dusty. We got SF6, right? So we got six fluorine. So let's get our trusty periodic table. So I've got fluorine. Can you read that? That's so many decimal places. What is that? 18.998403. That's good to six decimal places. So take 18.998403 times six plus sulfur, which is 32.066, which is three decimals. So we're going to be three decimal places, three decimal places. So let me get my fluorine. Oh, I can barely read that without my glasses. 18.998403 times six, right? Plus 32.066. We only have one sulfur. 146. Some, look at all those decimal places. Yikes! Good thing we're only need three of them. So let's write this number in there, 146.056, that's my three decimal places, so 146.056, I'm limited to that because of my sulfur, so we'll put a dash line there and add two more, 146.05641. You could go more past that if you want to, but they're not significant digits past that dash line anyway, so you really only need two. And that allows me to cancel the moles, and I'm left with grams. And it didn't specify the units for mass, so let's just leave it in grams. If you want to be weird on a test and convert that to centigrams, it's not wrong. I'll give you the points for it. But if you screw up that last step, I'm like, no, you had it. You were showing off, and you fell on your face. Most of my worst injuries were showing off for somebody. <laughs> I've actually had that happen on a test. Somebody finished a test early, thought they were being trying to impress me or being fancy pants or whatever. They did the problem right and then went beyond what they needed to do and got that wrong. And I'm like, oh, oh, I know exactly what that feels like. Just mine caused physical injuries. <laughs> Lots of them. Mostly in the shoulder and knee areas. Although I did split my head open, you know, all those kinds of things. But in band, I split my head open in band. Dislocated my shoulder in choir. I got a concussion in choir. I got a concussion in baseball, but I got to get a concussion in choir. What? <laughs> At a music stand, uh, you know, the little edge, those black music stands, some, it, was, it, it was a tripod that wasn't balanced, right? Somebody stepped on it and it went, Poof! and the edge hit me right here and the side of my face split open. You can barely see this guy. I almost lost my eye. It just, whoa. But you can see my skull and everything. I'm like, teacher, teacher, can I go to the nurse? He's like, why? I go, oh, and he goes, ah, I go to the nurse. And I'm like, this is like, you know, 40 years ago or whatever, maybe even more. And I was laying at the hospital. She, the nurse was like, you want to see your skull? I'm like, yeah. She put a mirror and peeled my skin back. I'm like, that's my skull. That's so awesome. Anyway, you didn't need to know that. So here we go. <laughs> we got three significant figures here. That's exact. That's not exact, right? But we truncated it to five significant figures, which should be plenty. Uh, and we got six significant figures in our molar mass. So we're obviously limited to three sig figs here. I get 2.3263 grams of sulfur hexafluoride. That's going to round up to 2.33. Uh, 
And we now how, know how to do a shortcut at SCP. And again, you did not have to do that. You could have used PD equals NRT and just plugged everything in there. You would have got exactly the same answer. I'm okay either way. But if you got the shortcut, another arrow in your quiver, use it! STP's easy.